I can this morning. See how things are looking out there, Steph? You want to jump in? You good? Okay, all right, in a minute. Uh, yeah, top of the hour here. If you're just joining us for GMSA, we're celebrating RJ Marquez's birthday today. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. It's Monday, the 15th of April, and Steph's back after being off last week. We missed you. I'm back. Well, I missed you too, and yes, I'm jumping in with my, my microphone fully on now. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, it's great to be back. Uh, I, I did get some sleep, though, so I'm, I'm ready to go. You got some what? Sleep. Sleep. <laughs> like, oh, what's, oh. Mark, what's that? <laughs> what a concept, especially for our producers and folks behind the scenes. Yeah. Well, Mike's here. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, beautiful weekend. It was a little on the humid side, though. You could start to feel the humidity mm -hmm. kind of come back in, especially if you're in the direct sun yesterday. Certainly, so. yeah. And it's going to be, if you like humidity, you're going to love this forecast for this week, and there's plenty of it out there right now. And just to look at the, the picture from our camera down there at Brook City Base, yes, we can still see the skyline, but... You know, just kind of thinking back to last Friday when we had the really dry air, how crisp this picture was. So a little, little fuzzier out there with all this extra humidity hanging around. Couple of patches of fog. Castroville at five miles visibility for Kerrville and just a hint of it showing up there. So just kind of be on the lookout for that throughout the course of the morning with all this extra humidity getting pumped on in here. Temperatures are averaging 10 12 degrees above normal across the board. We should be in the upper 50s here in town. And again, everybody's got these dew points well up there, mid and upper 60s. Matter of fact, just the low temperatures, 71 here in town. The warmest low temperature for normal low is usually in mid to late July going into August. So this is what we're looking at right now is what it, as far as it feels like. Mold is on the high side. Oak is finally dropping down. Maybe we are done with oak season, or at least on the, the, the waning days of oak season. We're going to keep a lot of clouds around this morning. Again, a patch of fog here or there. Temperatures may fluctuate a degree or two, then up to 77 at noon. A little bit of sunshine thrown in today, 85 high temperature, and a couple of stray showers late this afternoon, just here or there going into this evening as well. Fiesta starts on Thursday. Here's a hint. Hot and humid. Go figure, it's Fiesta. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Justin, what's going on, sir? Yeah, speaking of Fiesta, you and Fiona are going to be at Fiesta Fiesta, Fiesta correct? Fiesta Fiesta, yes, I'm seeing again. Awesome, uh, always a fun time. And just a gentle reminder that traffic is going to pick up around Fiesta time and ride shares are readily available. If you're going to go out and have some fun party with a purpose, just know you can always call a ride share, always a good idea. Uh, we know that SAPD is going to be uh, tracking everything with Fiesta very closely. So uh, heads up there. This morning, though, not a lot going on. 281 Marshall Road looks good. Uh, 281 at Grayson also looks good. That's uh, That curve right there always causes a few brake lights to come on, but uh, not enough traffic to cause any issues so far. As we look downtown, uh, also uh, seeing basically quiet traffic conditions. Uh, that's the case at 35 and I-37. As we've been reporting all morning, this is uh, this is not a bad situation. Now, we did just have an incident pop up on our screen there, and I'll uh, check it out here. This is just coming in there along, looks like 410. Uh, not sure if that's eastbound or westbound, but that near Castle Hills. We'll check in on what uh, what's going on there. It's not causing any slowdowns, whatever it is. Uh, otherwise, again, pretty quiet around town. Know that things will pick up here within the hour. Guys. Thank you, Justin. The search continues for the person who killed two men at a home near North Foster Road this past weekend. San Antonio police say it was around 2.30 in the morning when someone fired shots at the home on Delgado Run. According to the police, the victims Marquise Green and Damari Greenwich were standing at the garage when they were killed. Investigators are trying to figure out what led to that shooting and they are investigating the case as a capital murder case. Now to a plea to back ban books. Texas was home to the most attempts to ban or restrict books in 2022. And a local group sometime this weekend, spent some time this weekend educating and mobilizing. The National Council of Jewish Women created yesterday's event at Trinity University. The panelists whose books had been banned talked about the impact on the community. The goal was to discuss the topic and come up with an action plan. There are many things that people can do. Some are things that are quite simple, like read a banned book to your grandchild or buy a banned book and put it into one of our free libraries that are around the city. Those advocating for book bans typically say that the book in question contains graphic violence, expresses disrespect for parents and family, or is sexually explicit. Organizers hope the event will spark a bigger conversation on the topic. 
New morning headlines. The hush money trial of former President Donald Trump starts today in New York City with jury selection. It is the first criminal trial of a former commander in chief and the first of Trump's four indictments to go to trial. Trump has pleaded not guilty to 34 felony counts of falsifying business records as part of an alleged effort to keep stories about his sex life from emerging during his 2016 campaign. Over in Israel, the country rather is considering whether to retaliate against Iran for this past weekend's attack. The White House is urging restraint. As ABC's Alison Kostic reports, the UN Secretary General says it's time to step back from the brink. This morning, new details about Iran's unprecedented attack on Israel, launching more than 100 ballistic missiles and swarms of drones, a larger attack than expected in retaliation for an airstrike that killed two Iranian generals in Syria this month. Over here, you can see that rocket flying up in the sky just over Jerusalem here now. It's just raining rockets with those sirens blaring out. You can hear the interceptions every few seconds here. Overnight, ABC News confirmed at least half of those Iranian missiles either failed to launch, failed in flight, or crashed before reaching their targets in Israel. Israel says 99 percent of the drones and missiles ended up being intercepted by Israeli, U.S., and coalition forces. Those that did hit caused minor damage at an Israeli airbase and left a young girl critically wounded from missile shrapnel. While Tehran's massive attack has largely been a failure, a senior official saying that Iran's intent was clearly to be highly, highly destructive, causing significant damage and death in Israel. Now, attention turns to whether Israel will respond. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu meeting with his war cabinet yesterday. One member saying Israel would act in the manner and time that is appropriate for us. His war cabinet reportedly supports retaliating against Iran, but is divided over the timing and scale. U.S. officials, while emphasizing Israel's right to defend itself, say the U.S. will not participate in any counterstrike. On Capitol Hill, lawmakers are now considering a new military aid package for Israel. A vote could come as soon as this week. Allison Kosick, ABC News, New York. So happening today, if you still need to file your taxes, people here in San Antonio can use the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program to file their taxes for free. You can get those services at 13 locations throughout San Antonio and Fredericksburg. Some of those locations offer refund anticipation loans and they do not charge fees or interest. So for more information, you can go to VitaSA.org. Fiesta is almost here, and let's cover some of the highlights. Texas Cavaliers River Parade is a week from today on the 22nd. Battle of Flowers is on Friday the 26th, and Flambeau is on Saturday the 27th. So don't forget to get your tickets for all the KSAP Fiesta parties. So we have tickets for the day and night parades. This will give you a chance to have grandstand seating. So make sure to get your tickets now before we run out. So just look for the story on our website at kset.com. If you're new to town, you got to do this, folks. All right, so take out your phone, scan the QR code for your best chance to win the best seats in the house during the Battle of Flowers Parade or Fiesta Flambeau Parade. One lucky winner will receive six tickets to the parade watch party with VIP seats that include private seating for that parade. So they will also receive a $50 gift card from Ikea, so it's a win-win. So you have to be a KSET Insider to win, though, so make sure to sign up. You have from now until Wednesday at noon to enter for your chance to win. KSAT Metal Days are back, and you can grab a free KSAT Metal at various locations across San Antonio. We have a brand new location for you to visit this morning, and we'll reveal that location coming up on Good Morning San Antonio in our next half hour, so stick around for that. So before we go to break, the Big Green National Organization made a stop in San Antonio this weekend as part of its mission to get everyone in America to grow food. So Gardopio Gardens in Dignity Hills is the first stop in Texas for the Big Green Bus Tour. It's a community garden that supports strengthening garden programs across San Antonio schools. The founder and CEO of Gardopio Gardens says it's about more than just handing out seeds. When a kid pulls a carrot out of the ground, they have no clue where carrots fr come from. When they pull that apple off the tree, right, it's really connecting us to food and realizing food is nature. 
Stephen Lucky hopes to encourage more people to grow food in San Antonio. So in honor of Earth Month and the Big Greens Grow Together initiative, you can do something good for the environment by planting a tree, composting, or changing your shopping habits. But don't change your viewing habits. Right now you're watching DMSA at 10 minutes past the hour at 71 degrees. Well, still to come, the Spurs ended a rough season on a high note though, even without Wimby on the court. So we're gonna have the highlights from the finale at Frost Bank Center. They had a great game. And after the break, we'll introduce you to our KSAT interns as they share more about their time here this semester. They did an awesome job. Yes, they did. Look forward to seeing that and looking out there with a live cam. Not too hot for now, so enjoy that before the sun comes out. We're at 71 degrees. We'll be right back. Welcome back, 614. The KSAT Spring interns wrapping up their internships here at KSAT 12. Right, congrats. And they have learned a lot during their experience at the station, so here's what they had to say. Hi, my name is Andrea Moreno. My name is Ezekiel Ramirez. I'm a senior at Texas State University. And I'm a student at Texas State University. I'm on my last semester. And I'm a current intern at KSAT 12. And I am an intern at KSAT 12 this semester. I, I knew I wanted to do something with writing in the broadcasting industry. And being here at KSAT, it's made me realize that I have a passion and love for writing for the web team. The experience here at KSAT 12 has been absolutely life-changing. It's been my dream since I was a little boy to become a reporter. It's given me the skills that in a classroom I wouldn't have been able to get. That's cool. Congratulations. So right now on our website, you can read more about our internship program here at KSAT along with all of our job openings here. It's all on our website, KSAT.com. There's so many opportunities in front of the camera, but especially behind the camera, we did ask Ezekiel one-on-one, -on -one, hey, I said, hey, are you coming from a job? And he goes, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, come welcome. on, come welcome. get it. Well, we'll see them again. They were, they were awesome and uh, hope to see more of them. Yes, we do. Uh, time now, 6.15, and let's, we've had a nice morning on the roadway yeah. so far. I'm looking now at Loop 1604 at Bandera Road, and things are moving there, but we're going to check in with our Justin Horn. Yeah, we are starting to see a few issues, Steph, as the uh, morning commute uh, wears on. Most, most of the trans guy cameras look fine. We don't see much there at 1604 in Marbach. Uh, really, at any of the uh, trans guy cameras, as I look again, everything is uh, smooth sailing, but we're going to go to the map now. And remember that incident I talked about a little earlier? That's a stalled vehicle, usually not a big deal, but this one in particular looks like it might be blocking a, an exit ramp there. So far, it's not causing any problems, but this is along 410, just before Blanco Road. It may start to cause some issues as traffic picks up a little bit more, but we're still seeing uh, traffic traveling at posted speeds there on our map. Now, we'll take you up to I-35. Those who uh, travel inbound I-35, it's pretty much a... Uh, not a fun situation almost every morning, uh, but it is starting to get a little bit worse. This is a typical spot because we got construction here, starting to see some slowdowns right before 1604 as you're coming in. And this is obviously only gonna get worse. So know that I-35 is not gonna be so fun this morning as it is really every morning. Uh, 37 at Pecan Valley, uh, looks good there. We'll go through a couple of other trans guide shots. Again, we're not seeing anything that uh, is troublesome this morning, but I know all the folks here at KSAT that come in on I-35 and they pretty much are stressed out by the time they get to work that, <laughs> almost every cool. morning. That's yeah. true, that's yeah. true. All right, so just the last verse. Happy birthday, dear RJ. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. We miss you, buddy. Happy birthday. <laughs> I'm sure he's asleep. That actually didn't sound too bad. Right? Yeah. Almost like we rehearsed okay. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys sounded good. <laughs> we sound good. I have an earpiece, you so I didn't, hear, I didn't hear that sound every day. <laughs> Maybe that's why I was going to say it. I, I was like, you sounded good thing. to me. <laughs> Hey, if you're uh, heading out to the bus this morning, it is definitely warm and humid. Just watch out for a little patch of uh, some fog here and there. And then, yeah, it's going to be, it's getting up there later on today. Have an umbrella handy. A couple of stray showers here and there this afternoon. More likely heading toward dinner time and going into this evening is when we have the uh, little bit better chance for some rain. So, all right, take a look at this picture and 
The hummers are back. Yep, put something out for them, and they will come. Hummingbirds are so always so fascinating to watch. Yeah. Yeah, like that's yeah, just amazing. So thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture, Peggy. Appreciate that. All right, again, looking from our camera down there, at Brook City Base, we can see the skyline. Obviously, good news, but it, it's kind of. You know, not as crisp and clear of a picture as what we had last week. So there is more humidity out there. And yeah, a little bit of fog up there around uh, Kerrville still, Castroville. Again, those are the only two spots. Maybe a, a hint there right around Port SA. Nothing too thick, but uh, just again, be on the lookout over the next uh, couple of uh, couple of hours around here. Normal high temperature 80. Normal low is 58. And then by the end of the month, by the way, usually the fourth wettest month on average, we have had some rain. We could obviously use some more a little bit in the forecast. Not much, though. 83 and then 62 by the end of the month. So we'll gain about a degree and a half, two degrees each week as far as the uh, normal high temperatures, the average high temperatures. But we have been very much above normal and are going to stay that way this week. Got up to 86 yesterday. Look at that 98 in Laredo, 95s in Carrizo Springs, as well as Catula. And today it's going to be about the same situation. We're going to be well up there into the uh, the mid and even some upper 80s around the area. So staying on the above normal side, we're starting off obviously about a good 10, 11, 12 degrees above normal across the board. As I was talking about those few stray showers that are going to be popping up around the area, Basically, just because we have so much humidity out there, it doesn't really you know, take much. A little disturbance moves into the area, and you get a couple of those showers here and there. It's not going to be any really big rain event. You know, there can always be a, a clap of thunder here and there, but not anything not anything to really write home about. And this is going to be the situation going into the early morning hours tomorrow as well. Now, as far as the satellite picture, notice all the clouds out here. Notice how they are coming in here from the southwest. That's the upper level moisture coming in. Of course, we've got the southeasterly winds that pulls in the moisture down here at the surface. And so put it all together and hot and humid basically what it, what comes out. We've got a little bit of this disturbance moving through here tonight. It's not really going to do that much as far as temperatures or humidity. It's just squeezing out those couple of showers here and there. And then going into tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday. Look at that for the start of Fiesta Fiesta. Very hot and humid. Couple of showers out there. One or two. I really wouldn't, uh, you know, get scared off by those. Same thing on Friday for all of the events and then slightly better shot at some rain on Saturday and then late Saturday night. But a front is going to move on through here and that's at least going to trim the humidity and trim temperatures a little bit this weekend. But excited for Fiesta Fiesta. Fiona and I are out there again. I don't know how many years has this been about six, seven years or yeah. so. It's always so much fun with all those people out there and everybody's just in such a fantastic that's so true, mood, you know, and everybody says Viva Fiesta at the same time. We always take a selfie and it's, a it's, just, it's just a blast. So love it. So. It's a good start to Fiesta and you're at a new location this year. Yeah, the uh, the HB Plaza at the Dome. So mm -hmm. that's going to be nice. Hopefully uh, parking's a little bit easier for a lot of folks. Yeah. It was at Travis Park last year, maybe a little bit tougher. So yeah, yeah we can uh, head on out there. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Yes, right. it is. Thank yep. you, Mike. 621, 71 degrees on your Monday morning. Well, just to have new details are emerging over OJ Simpson's estate. And if the family's involved in a civil lawsuit, We'll get any money. That's next in your GMA First Look. There it is. That feeling you get when you can do more with less asthma. It starts with Dupixent. Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma and can help improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks. Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks and can even reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Can you picture it? Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about newer worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Who knows what you can do when you do more with less asthma? Ask your doctor about Dupixent, the most prescribed biologic for asthma. In this morning's GMA First Look, what happens now to O.J. Simpson's estate placed in a newly created trust? Personal belongings, uh, anything they have like that is going to be part of the estate. So there will be, I will be doing inventorying and trying to see what is out there. 
In a 1997 civil suit, Simpson was found liable for the slayings of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman, ordered to pay more than $33 million in damages, but only paid a fraction. Now, the Goldmans want what they're legally owed. Uncle Sam is going to be first, right? And depending on the assets, it could be a situation where after the taxes are paid, there's next to nothing left. And coming up at 7 a.m., legal expert Dan Abrams weighs in live. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. Spurs hosting the worst team in the NBA, the Detroit Pistons, in the final game of the regular season this weekend. No Wemby or Keldon for the Spurs. Zach Collins will have an MRI today after a collision with the Pistons' James Weissman. He would leave to the locker room and would not return. But that wouldn't stop Trey Jones. He gets the steal, goes the other way, and slams it down. SA led by 30 after three, and they would storm to the finish line in the fourth. So here's your final from Frostbank Center. That's a wrap, folks. Spurs win at 123 to 95. Every Spurs starter finished in double digits. San Antonio finishes the year at 22 and 60. Same record as last year and as the second worst team in the West. But they're expected to pick in the top five of June's NBA draft. And we always say, no matter what, right. go, go Spurs, Spurs go. go. That's right. We're still here for you. Time now, 626 and 71 degrees for now. Here's a look at what's coming up next half hour. Just helping out, just helping out the school. Yeah. Uh, we're not certified landscapers or anything. We're just helping out, just planting grass and uh, planting new plants. Yeah. That'll hopefully last for a while. Well, we're glad they're helping out. Students in Alamo Heights got busy this weekend making their campus beautiful. So ahead in our next half hour, the sights and sounds from Mulch Mania. Looks like it was a lot more than mulch for sure. Outside right now, checking Transguide. Quite a few more cars on the roads now as we approach the bottom of the hour, especially there at 90 at Medio Creek. There's I-37 at Loop 410 here in San Antonio. We're back after this. Up in Edom on a Monday morning, waiting for the sun to come up. It is uh, running right now pretty warm this morning. We've been hovering right around 70 degrees since we walked in the door. And Steph's back. Oh, thanks. It's good to be back. Good morning. It is April 15th. It is also RJ's birthday. Yes. And later this week, we're going to see Fiesta again. We are. It's that time. We've been talking about it for a while now. And Mike Ostrage is here with a pre-Fiesta forecast. Yes, indeed. And wait, look toward the camera and then oh. look at the beautiful, <laughs> My Fiesta beautiful earrings. Fiesta oh, earrings. yeah. I'm ready. Very festive. <laughs> Thank oh, you. We'll have to get a close up over there. But yeah. yeah. Actually, this is for, for producer Alex. Thank you, Alex. Oh, yeah, okay. she's, she's on the other side uh, watching us right now. Fiesta always uh, is kind of synonymous with hot and humid. Yes, yeah. usually. Usually, and well, that's going to work out this year, at least for the start of Fiesta. We've got a lot of clouds around here right now. We're not really seeing any glow yet of the, uh, the sunrise. It is definitely warm and humid. We are averaging all around the area. 10, 11, 12 degrees above normal. Should be in the upper 50s right now. And a bunch of humidity with dew points above 60 uh, with winds out of the southeast continuing to pull in all of that moisture. And with all the extra humidity, the only spot we're seeing any Real uh, thicker fog out there at Kerrville, three miles visibility, a hint of it around Castroville as well as Port S.A. So again, I've just been saying all morning long, be on the lookout for that as the morning goes on. Again, everybody is 10, 12 degrees above normal as of right now, and everybody has all of this moisture, and that's just continuing to get pumped on in here. Mold is on the high side. At least it looks like oak is finally season's coming to an end as we uh, are in the waning days of oak season. Warm and humid, a couple of showers late this afternoon and toward dinner time, and then going into this evening. All that humidity and little disturbance is going to move into the area. So, yeah, we'll just see a few of them out there. Tomorrow, Wednesday, Plenty of clouds, probably a little bit more in the way of sunshine tomorrow, but still a fair amount of clouds, and it is definitely going to continue to heat up in the mid and upper 80s. Start of Fiesta on Thursday, hot and humid. We are looking at 90 degrees, plenty of humidity. Can't rule out a stray shower. Not going to be a repeat of what we had. This is looking right now of what we had last year where Fiesta Fiesta got rained out with those storms. And then we go into the weekend. Now, Friday is still going to be hot and humid. 
there is, as it looks right now, a bit of a front moving on through here. So that will give us a slightly better chance for a stray shower thunderstorm on Saturday. Also, though, some lower temperatures and some lower humidity, so a bit more pleasant as we go on into the weekend. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Horn, has been pretty quiet on the roads. Has been. We just have our first issue yeah. of the morning showing up right now. 604 in Marbach. This is on the far west side going northbound. You see traffic almost coming to a stop here. The flashing lights are well into the distance there. This crash is actually near Petrenko, uh, but the uh, the stop and go traffic goes all the way back to Marbach. So this is going to be uh, a problem. We just saw an ambulance uh, drive through on the shoulder, so this could be an injury a related accident. We're going to keep an eye on that, but this is where it's located. Uh, here on the far west side, we'll zoom in a little bit closer here, and it's the northbound lanes where we're seeing slowdowns. It's coming in right along the uh, near Petrenko, and then you see the uh, stop and go traffic is stretching back almost to Marbach, and I would imagine this is going to start to stack up even more. We'll get you more information on that, uh, but that's uh, just coming in. And then uh, we mentioned this on the far northeast side, a lot of slowdowns there on I-35 inbound as you're passing through 1604 starting to see this turn to red. So this is stop and go traffic and it's slow even further down I-35. This will only get worse. Uh, so if you're heading out the door right now, uh, know that you're gonna have some slowdowns there along 1604. But the main issue we have at the moment is there at 1604 in Marbach with some flashing lights and that's in the northbound lanes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Today is tax day. If you haven't filed yet, don't freak out. You still have until midnight. You won't be able to file. Uh, if you won't be able to file by midnight, go to irs.gov and request an extension, which will give you an additional six months to submit your taxes until October 15th. If you're expecting a refund, you can check the status of your refund on irs.gov with the Where's My Refund tool. The IRS will issue most refunds within 21 days or less if you file electronically with direct deposit. Meanwhile, the White House has announced plans for its latest student, don student, rather, student loan debt relief program. And if it goes as planned, it could eliminate billions of dollars from the total debt load nationwide for those who qualify. However, as our Courtney Friedman reports, it won't affect most people. We're fixing a broken system. The Biden administration announcing Friday it plans to wipe away another $7.4 billion in student loan debt for around 277,000 borrowers nationwide. We're trying to provide a fair shot to Americans uh, trying to access higher education. Student loan debt relief has been a cornerstone issue for the president since he was elected in 2020. Early in my term, I announced a major plan to provide millions of working families with debt relief for their college student debt. At the time, several GOP-led states sued to block his plan, an effort that the Supreme Court upheld. The initial plan would have wiped away 20000 in debt for millions of qualified recipients. I announced we we're going to pursue alternative paths. That brings us to this week. My administration will propose a new rule to cancel up to $20,000 in runaway interest for any borrower that owes more now than when they started paying the loan. Some debt holders could qualify to have all of their interest cleared under the plan. We're going after those schools that are defrauding our borrowers. For months, the Department of Education has been working on a new path towards their debt relief goal, using a different legal authority granted under the Higher Education Act of 1965. There's a required public comment period before the DOE can finalize any new proposals. The White House says if all goes as planned, canceling accrued interest for qualified borrowers could begin as early as this fall, right around election time. That was Courtney Friedman reporting. In total, President Biden has authorized the cancellation of over $153 billion in debt for about 4 million people. That's only about 9% of all outstanding federal student loan debt. April is Autism Acceptance Month or Autism Awareness Month. And tomorrow we'll be hosting a KSAC community town hall called Understanding Autism. Guests will be joining Tiffany Huertas to answer questions you may have, help raise awareness and promote acceptance. You can tune into the town hall tomorrow. This is at 2 p.m. on KSAT.com, KSAT Plus or the KSAT YouTube channel. The town hall will then be followed by the Walk for Autism on the 20th. And this happens at Palo Alto College. The countdown is on with just a few days until we kick off San Antonio's largest party of the year. Fiesta Fiesta is at a new spot. The Alamo Dome, it kicks off Thursday and we will be live from the event starting at 8 o'clock. So over the span of 10 days, there are so many Fiesta events happening all over town. So Friday, April 19th is the start of Fiesta Oyster Bake. 
Monday, April 22nd is the Texas Cavaliers River Parade and Tuesday, April 23rd kicks off NIOSA. Wednesday, April 24th, this case has Know My Neighborhood. And yes, the, this month the focus is on downtown. Very appropriate. And of course, uh, we have the band festival coming up April 25th. Battle of Flowers, April 26th. Uh, this is uh, one of our favorites, of course, Mark and I, we get to do that. And Saturday, April 27th, we have a lot of going on. So we're going to start off in the morning with the King William Fair and Parade and end it with the Fiesta Flambeau Night Parade. So you can expect KSET to bring all that live coverage of all these events and more. We are truly your Fiesta station. And while we're mentioning parades, don't forget about our, be a part of our KSAT Insider parties. Scan the QR code to register to become a KSAT Insider and get tickets to the Battle of Flowers Insider Party. That's right. And the, if the night parade is more of your vibe, there's a QR code for that as well. And if you want to take your insider status a step further, we have a sweepstakes that you can enter. Sip your coffee if we say QR code every time. If you scan <laughs> the QR code you're seeing now, you can enter our contest to win the best seats in the house brought to you by IKEA. This contest runs through April 17th at noon. The winner will receive six tickets to the Battle of Flowers Parade Party with VIP passes for private seating. And you also get a $50 gift card to IKEA. Scan the QR code, take a sip. All right. If you didn't have time to do all the QR codes, it's all on KSET.com. It's right there for you. We'll help you out. 639, 71 degrees. Well, KSET Metal Days are back, and you can grab a free KSET Metal at various locations across San Antonio. So we have a brand new location for you to visit this morning, and we will reveal that location coming up next on Good Morning San Antonio. So stick around. Welcome back. It's exactly 643. Back for its second year, Mulch Mania took over Alamo Heights Junior School this weekend. So the goal of the Saturday's event was to get the students, their families, and the school staff involved in beautifying the campus. Our GMSA crew was there and talked to some of the people in the middle of all the action. Take a look. Of our community. It's so obvious the things they do for us. They show up, they volunteer, uh, they provide assistance when we ask for them, and I just love our community. Why does this matter to y'all so much? Because it helps the environment and uh, it's very therapeutic. be able to look at all the mulch and stuff and say, hey, I did that. And it's, you know, getting the kids out here to get involved in it, it's not just showing up in the campus is pretty, when the campus is pretty, they were part of it, they did it, so it gives them, gives them some true ownership in it. It, it is inspiring, it shows me that the students care. They're all coming out here and putting their heart into this and it's just really amazing. So as you can see, they did a lot of work all over the campus, and you can read more about the story in the KSET Kids section of KSET.com. We've been telling you about it all morning long, and it's time to reveal the location for our KSAT Fiesta Metal Giveaway. It's at Conviva Care Center at 9418 Gilbo Road. That's on the northwest side near Gilbo and Old Tezel Road. Line starts forming in about 15 minutes at 7 a.m. Good luck out there. Get your medal now. That's right. Very exciting that we're starting this already. Uh, time now, 645. And looking out there, Transgate, uh-oh, a little yeah. bit of a hold up there on 1604. At Marbach. Here's Justin. He's keeping an eye on things as well. Yes. Well, I'm working on a Fiesta forecast over here. My, my apologies. Uh, yes. So let's go over to uh, Transguide very quickly and I'll show you uh, what's going on there. There is the slowdown along 1604 and it's because there is a crash here right around Petrenko and that's where uh, that is that incident is but it's causing backups pretty much all the way to Marbach. Now this is 1604 northbound on the far west side where we're seeing this. You see a lot of brake lights. So this is going to be a big slowdown. We've got a couple out there northeast side along I-35 inbound. That's where we're seeing some of the uh, big slowdowns at this hour. Also starting to notice a few along 1604 just before you get to 281. 
and then there's that crash out near uh, Petrinka where we're seeing some slowdowns. And that crash is right about there, uh, but it's causing those slowdowns all the way back to Marbach. And you see the red here, that indicates almost basically you're stopped, okay? So the, the traffic is moving very, very slowly. And that's going to be one of the big uh, backups, I think, here over the next uh, 30 minutes or so while they get this crash cleaned up. Uh, and that's that one view that we have there on Transguide. And then I'll take you up to I-35 once again. And that's the big slowdown. We, we're continuing to see red show up even more so inbound as you cross over 1604 uh, coming inbound. So that's a, that's a construction area, and it is known for the slowdowns. That's going to continue uh, and probably get a little bit worse before it gets better. There's another look at 1604 in Marbach on the uh, far west side, as we said. And that's the main problem area at this hour. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. Thinking yeah. about the kids and the mulch mania and all that mm -hmm. stuff. It's great getting head, kids getting out there getting dirt on their you know, fingernails and everything like that and fresh air. And then they can walk past and go, I well, did that. I did that. Yeah. yeah. And when they start fun. blooming and growing and everything, it's like yeah. they get that, Exciting. You know, take pride in all that work out there. So good Very for them. Nice. Now, if you'd like to bring all that mulch over to my house and uh, <laughs> come on over, kids, we'll do another story and put you on TV. Sure. So. Uh, beautiful larkspurs and red yucca reaching for the skies. What a great picture in those beautiful blue skies in the background there. Oh, that's pretty. Thank you very much for that picture, Peggy. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, well, is that a little bit of a glow? Is that the, the car lights out there? Got a lot of clouds. We're not really seeing much of the, uh, the glow of the sunrise this morning. Uh, Kerrville has actually improved slightly. I mean, we're not, we haven't seen any really, really thick fog out there, but just again, with all the moisture, just watch out for a, a little bit of fog. So a couple of showers, maybe a, a thunderstorm or two kind of popping up around the area later on this evening around dinner time, going into the early evening hours. And this is a little disturbance sliding on in here. We've just got so much moisture. It's not going to take much to kind of squeeze it out, if you will, and, and get a few of these stray showers here and there going into this evening. Not going to amount to a heck of a lot. I mean, if you've got one little thunderstorm to pop up, yeah, you could have a decent downpour, but this is not going to be a big widespread event. We'll take anything we can get, of course, as far as any of this rain is concerned, and some of that will even uh, last in the overnight hours into the wee hours of tomorrow. Satellite picture. Got plenty of clouds hanging around here right now. And notice how these clouds are flowing in here from the west and from the, the southwest. So this is all the moisture coming in upstairs in the atmosphere from the Pacific Ocean. And then downstairs, down here at the surface, we get the moisture, obviously, from the Gulf of Mexico. So it's kind of layered, if you will. And then as far as... Uh, what's going to be going on in the next couple of days that low out there to the west of us that's what's helping to pull in all this moisture upstairs in the atmosphere plus out ahead of it we've got this big ridge building and so that's why temperatures are five degrees above normal we're going to be five ten degrees above normal as we get into the latter portion of the week especially on thursday we're going to be looking at 90 for a high temperature normal high right now is 80 so that low will continue to sort of slide in our direction uh, a little bit of a well, I don't want to say a front moves through here, but it's going to try to trim humidity slightly, at least in our western counties tomorrow. It doesn't look like it's going to make it through here in town, so we'll stay very warm and humid. And then notice how all the activity moves up there to the north. Now, with this very warm, humid air and little disturbances trying to slide through, there's a small chance for a shower or two by Thursday, Friday, but nothing just, you know, jumps off the map. Then by the weekend, we will have a little bit better chance maybe for some rain on Saturday, but also a little bit better bit of a front trying to move on through here for the weekend. So today we'll have those couple of showers hanging around here and then we go into the next few days just starts to heat up 88 Wednesday 90 on Thursday. Friday is going to be hot as well. So for Fiesta Fiesta, dress appropriately Friday for Oyster Bake for Alamo Heights night, all that the weekend, a little bit better, slightly better chance of a shower or two on Saturday, but come on down Thursday. Say hi at uh, Fiesta Fiesta. Fiona and I are going to be there again. So it's always quite a quite an honor to be able to, to MC that. But it is a blast. Yes. I love it. So and maybe more room for more visitors with the parking situation as well. Yeah. Yes, I, I don't know what the exact parking situation is around there though. But you got all the parking around the dome and downtown. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that works out better right there at the HEB Plaza at the dome. Very excited for that. Thank you, Mike. 10 till 71 degrees. Well, RJ is off today, but we still wanted to wish him an official happy birthday there. RJ, you are awesome to work with. Have an awesome day. Has anybody texted you? <laughs> not, not yet. Not, it's not too yet. early. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> we should we should get everybody to FaceTime with him all at once. His phone number coming up after the break. Uh, it's outside with live cam right now. We're not going to do that, RJ. But no. yeah, let's go out there. Happy birthday, buddy. Out there right now, uh, waiting for the sun to peek through some of those clouds on your early Monday morning. We've been telling you about it all morning. Here is the location of today's KSAT Fiesta Middle Giveaway. It's at Conviva Care at 9418 Gilbo Road. That's on the far northwest side next to Old Tezel Road. The line starts forming in about five minutes at 7 o'clock this morning. Good luck out there. Yes, good luck. And let's check the roads. It is 654. I'm looking over at Loop 1604 at Marbuck Road and still problems there. Yeah, still brake lights. That's the northbound lanes as uh, you're headed toward uh, headed towards Petrenko. We have uh, what looks like a crash here. We've seen some flashing lights and uh, this is really causing traffic to uh, slow down. That's the uh, one crash being reported. Otherwise, it's just slowdowns around the city where uh, we have our normal uh, stop and go traffic. So let's zoom in there on the far west side. That is where that crash is near Petrenko along 1604. And that backup is almost now to uh, the, down to Highway 90. So just heads up if you're uh, going to be traveling in that direction, know there will be some slowdowns. Also noticing some slowdowns there along 151. Our typical slowdowns along 90 inbound and also 35 inbound. As you go past the forum, it is stop and go traffic. Picks up a little bit past there, but it is going to be a slow go. If you are headed in from, say, New Braunfels, Shirts, uh, Cibolo area, that's uh, that's going to be a problem in a construction area that causes issues, Mike. Lots of clouds out there this morning. It is definitely warm. It is definitely humid and a hint of fog here or there. We're in the low 70s and upper 60s right now. A couple of showers late this afternoon into this evening, 85, and it's going to be hot for the start of Fiesta. A lot of metal weight, metal ways, metal giveaways. Easy for me to say coming up this week. And Justin and I get to be at Pika Pika again next week. Yes, we do. Yes. Love that. And I like you your medal. Y'all, your pictures. Thank you. I got my face on a medal. Very nice. And him too. 